How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we are going to recap the very first Flesh and Blood Pro Tour with my own experiences. We're going to share some photos, we're going to share some footage, and at the end of the video, we're going to kind of go over everything that I acquired over the weekend and give some of it to you. I don't want to spoil it too much, but we're going to give away one of my favorite cards in the entire game, a Go Bananas, and some other really, really awesome exclusive things. So stay tuned for the end of the video when we talk about all of the things that I acquired over the weekend. So let's start talking about the Pro Tour. I think we're just going to divide this up day by day and talk about it, you know, compartmentalize one at a time. And we're going to start with negative day one. This is the Wednesday, the day that I got in, and it was a doozy of a flight six hour flight for me from Portland, Oregon, all the way to New Jersey, uh, into Newark, New Jersey. And um, I gotta say, six hour flight, it's kind of, it's kind of uncomfortable, right? Uh, but once we got there, I had uh, a great time meeting up with some really good friends of mine, Ian Kenderdine and Jim from Fab TCG Cards. And we went to what else? What, what's a bunch of nerds gonna go to? We went to an arcade. Not just an arcade, we went to Barcade. Barcade was a ton of fun. Kind of like this little tiny mom and pop dive bar with a arcade smashed into it. Tons of tons of really old arcades, some that I've never even heard of before. There was like this firefighter Atari one. There was Pong there that had pinball machines and Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and Gauntlet. It was an absolute blast. But that is going to be the end of day one, or I'm gonna call it negative day one, because the next day we have officially day zero of the Pro Tour. And I'm calling this day zero because this is the day that the player's banquet was on. And this was just a really fun, sort of invite-only event. If you were invited to the Pro Tour, then you could get in. Also, staff could get in as well. Since I was doing coverage and commentary for the event, it was, you know, I, I got an invite as well. And uh, it was awesome. I got to meet so many people. I met people from um, Sweden and Spain and Germany and France and obviously New Zealand and Australia and Canada. And it was like this giant conglomeration of the, you know, flesh and blood world all in one place. And it was awesome. I love talking to everyone. Um, shout out to everyone that I met. If you're watching this video and you're one of the people that I met, please comment down below and... Um, I, it, it was it was an awesome experience. I, at that point in time, I also kind of got a feel for how the meta was going to play out over the weekend, asking folks what they were playing at the Pro Tour, and it, basically I kind of got the same idea um, that we saw play out at the Pro Tour, except for, for, for one exception, and we'll talk about that once we tar start talking about the Pro Tour. But one thing that I did notice is that no one was playing Arcane Barrier. And this is actually something that we talked about back in the hotel room with me and Ian Kendrick. And I was just saying, I was like, man, someone who is very skilled with Kano could come and take this event because no one's playing with Arcane Barrier. Throughout day zero, I also did a lot of testing with Ian. Um, I just wanted to help him prepare for the event. And so I brought a chain classic constructed deck to run up against his levia deck we played just a ton in the lobby of the uh, hotel that we were staying at and it was just it was just a lot of fun and that's going to take us to day one of the pro tour this is the day that kind of just kicked it all off it was 
an incredibly fun and exciting experience. You know, me, I was stuck in the coverage area for the whole time, but I did get a chance to get out and about, uh, record a little bit, talk to a lot of folks. Um, there were uh, a couple artists there, Steve Argyle and Federico Musetti, and over the course of the weekend, I was able to talk to them both individually, just fantastic guys. Got some pictures with them, got some signatures. We're gonna go over those very shortly once we get to all the stuff that I acquired over the weekend, but those are definitely some highlights of the weekend, just getting to meet some of my favorite artists and um, especially Steve Argyle, because um, I've been a fan of his since forever. The dude's worked on Legend of the Five Rings, Magic, Flesh and Blood, tons and tons of stuff. And Federico is a, a new favorite of mine over the last couple years since Flesh and Blood has been a thing and just awesome, fantastic being able to meet them. Also, I got to meet over the course of this weekend, I got to meet a ton of community members. Tons and tons of selfies were had and um, I'm just going to be posting them over the course of this video. You've probably seen some already. Coverage overall was fantastic. I got to give a huge shout out to my co-casters, Brian Gottlieb, Tan and Grace, um, Flake, DM Armada, and then Matt Rogers even kind of jumped into the mix at the end. They're all great dudes, absolute professionals. I um, am truly honored and um, I feel very privileged to be able to work with them. Just, just the best of things to say about them. And you know, I really look forward to working with them all again in the future. The meta is basically what we thought it would be. Lots of Starvos, lots of chains, and then kind of like a mix. But I would say the breakout deck of the weekend was Kano, piloted by a good number of folks. We had, you know, Hayden Dale, we had uh, Brennan Patrick, but the ones that kind of were able to push through were Alexander Vore and Sasha Markovic, and they did an exquisite job pushing all the way to the top eight. I believe there were seven Kanos in the Pro Tour total, and two of them converted to the top eight. So that is an insane conversion rate, right? Only seven decks registered, two of them made it all the way to the top eight, and that is basically what you call like breaking the format. You know, they, they, they called the event. Now, I don't know if Kano is like the best deck in Flesh and Blood, but it was the best deck for that tournament. Even though they didn't win, they basically called it and were able to just absolutely crush so much of the competition. Once again, they didn't get there in the end. I was really, really rooting for them, but it, it created a lot of excitement and it was really, really fun watching and casting those matches. Speaking of which, I wanna give a huge shout out right now to Yuki Lee Bender, who was piloting Lexi, an absolute master at the Ranger class. She's one of the best Flesh and Blood players in the world, in my opinion. And even though she also didn't you know, get there, I think she had like a nine and one run um, up until she got a couple losses, uh, some oh, crushing on-stream loss against Alexander Vore playing Kano. And uh, you just hate to see it. You just hate to see like the two rogue decks get pitted against each other. Every time I see that in like uh, in a tournament, it just it's just a huge bummer, right? You have like a million Starvos, you have like 128 Starvos, and you know the the Kano and the Lexi get pitted against each other. It's terrible, but that's how tournaments are. And I just want to give a huge shout out to her. She did a fantastic job. Um, I think there's some deck text that she did. Um, hopefully, I'll remember to put a, a link in the description for that for her Lexi um, Ice Aggro deck, which is which is really really cool. And that's just gonna kind of take us into day two and three. And I'm, I'm gonna kind of lump these a little bit together because starting on day two is when the calling started and things got crazy. There was so many people, so many people at the event. It was uh, insane, like more people than day one. I, it was almost overwhelming, right? There was a couple times that I had to run to the bathroom. So I ran to the, the back bathroom, line up to the door, ran to the front bathroom, line out the door. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. So I just ran back to my hotel because it would be quicker than waiting in both of the lines. It was um, overwhelming, exhausting, and so much fun and so awesome. I, I would not trade this experience for anything. Um, so many, I got to meet so many people. Like I said, just met so many community members, other content creators. I met everyone from Tall Timmy, Flukenbox, um, Paranine. I just had tons and tons of people. I know I'm going to forget like dozens. There's, there's, there's dozens. Once again, if I met you, please comment down below. Uh, 
I'm going to have you comment something else later to enter the giveaway, but um, yeah. I also got a chat with almost everyone from Legend Story Studios who were there. I got to get most of them to sign uh, the LSS staff playmat that James White sent me for the 10k celebration. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that because that's probably one of my more uh, disappointing things for the weekend. It's not that big of a deal, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's just so much going on and i i, I want to uh, re reiterate how awesome it was being able to talk with lss members um so you know big out big shout out to both of the chris's um josh um alan hale just like awesome dudes and it was so good to like finally talk to them like in person james white i gotta see maybe three times for a total of like 40 seconds uh the dude was like so busy he was like so I, I got a point in time where I got to talk to him and then I was like, hey man, can I get you to sign a thing? It was the playmat, right? And then we went over to sign the playmat, but the pen wasn't working. So we we're trying to find a pen. And during that time, something had happened. I think it was something to do with Jim. Jim crashed or froze or something. And then James had to get you know pulled away to fix that. And then I never saw him again. <laughs> I just never saw him again that day. Um, and that that's just kind of how it was. I heard a story where uh, a fan stopped him to like take a picture and then a line formed and he was there for two hours just like greeting people and um, you know shaking hands taking pictures all that kind of stuff he's just a great dude and he's you know willing to give his time for the community but he did that constantly like the whole day so i know he was very very stretched then so by the time i actually got to you know he was actually in the coverage area on day three he looked pretty tired and there was no way in hell I was gonna bother him with my dumb crap like he just wanted to watch he just wanted to watch the games and I'm not gonna be like hey James uh even though you just spent like three hours like signing stuff do you want to sign some of my dumb dumb crap no I'm not I wasn't gonna do that so um a little bit of a regret for the weekend I never got my mat signed by James it has all the other LSS members who was there who were there but not James so it's a uh, kind of incomplete for the time being. Maybe I'll get a chance to get James to sign it in the future. Maybe get a, a photo with him and chat with him a little bit. Uh, that would be great. But, you know, it's not his fault, right? Uh, and also, like, there's no way I was gonna, you know, like those lines and stuff. There's no way I was gonna cut in line or, or butt in or anything. Like, me meeting James wasn't any more important than anyone else meeting James. And I wasn't gonna try to, you know, deprive someone else of their opportunity to, we're all just people and we're all just here to we're all just there to have a good time and hopefully I'll have a chance in the future, but eh, who knows. Now back to how the tournament actually did. The Kanos that I were rooting for didn't end up winning. However, the lone chain actually was able to take it. Pablo Pintor, huge congrats to you, my dude. Absolutely well-deserved, excellent playing all the way from Spain. And it was a, it's, it's an incredible story. He went zero and two day one and then he stuck with it and absolutely cleaned house and went to win and it proves that perseverance can get you there even if you are zero and two you can still win the pro tour so i absolutely love that absolutely love the determination and uh, you know it didn't tilt him right he didn't get all down and be like oh i'm zero two no way i can win no he won and i absolutely respect that and I think it's awesome. So huge shout out to him. We also had Starvo win the calling, which means Starvo is now living legend. Starvo is a living legend. We're going to have a very diverse meta coming up. We have the ProQuest season and then we have Uprising coming up right after that. And uh, yeah, things are going to get shaken up quite a bit. Also on day three, I was invited to participate in a welcome to Wraith alpha draft and it was a ton of fun i ended up going uh one and one um losing to saint from the fabled hunters it was a very very close game shout out to saint and the fabled hunters i had him down to one life and he was able to play regurgitating slog a red regurgitating slog using the additional uh payment of banishing a slogism from your bin and giving it dominate. And he was able to get me. I was at three. All I could do was block three and I died. It was it was so close, but an absolutely fantastic game. I had a ton of fun. Didn't really get anything spicy. And I know people are gonna ask, there wasn't really anything spicy pulled. Someone did open a, an enlightened strike, which is awesome, uh, but uh, no like um, legendary or fabled. I think the cold foil was a bark bone strapping or no, no, hardened cross strap. It was a hardened cross strap, but Still a ton of fun. And I'm going to show that deck off that I drafted um, 
when we get to the next section, which is going to be in just a moment. And you know what, actually, let's get to that now. I just want to do a little wrap up here and that's the, then we'll start talking about all the, the cool stuff that I got because I have so much to show you. Um, I thought the Pro Tour was amazing. I don't think it could have gone any better. Um, the 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 camaraderie, the excitement in the air was palpable. The event sold out. It sold out. People wanted to play the game so much that you couldn't play the game because it sold out. And that's, you know, that's a bad thing. That sucks for all the people who, you know, couldn't participate. But also in the grand scheme of things, when you when people are talking about this, that just sounds awesome, right? That just sounds so good for the game. It's really good optics, as they say, right? The event sold out, right? The first Pro Tour sold out, and I think that's just starting a trend here where you know Flesh and Blood has been on the upward you know trajectory, but I think it's just gonna go even more, just go even more upwards. We have the Uprising World Premiere event coming up in a few weeks in Las Vegas, and you should register now so you can, you know, get in before it sells out because there's a good chance that it sells out. So all in all, an amazing weekend, an absolutely legendary event for me personally. It was one of the highlights of my year, if not the highlight of my career as a content creator and a caster um, just so far. It's, it's amazing and I can't wait for the next one. I will be going to the world premiere event in Las Vegas. So if you wanted to see me or you know any other content creator, you will get your chance in Las Vegas at the Uprising world premiere event. Please uh, don't feel bad about stopping me and saying hi if I'm doing something, um, you know, I, I encourage it. I, I love meeting people and love meeting the community and talking with people. But without further ado, let's show all the stuff that I got and then give some stuff away. I got some I got some really good stuff to give away. It's like, yeah. All right, so let's kick it off by talking about some of the playmats that I got. So I actually brought seven playmats to give out to various people um, at the event. So I brought a bunch of my Kodako's library mats to give out to Alan Hale from Legend Story Studios, uh, Robbie Wen uh, at Legend Story Studios, um, an extra one for any Legend Story Studios person who might want it back in New Zealand, James White, wh whoever would want it. Um, and then I brought one to give to uh, Flukenbox. I brought, um, oh, what else? I brought the playmat that I wanted to get signed. I'm forgetting another one. Oh, I brought another one of my playmats to give to Alan Hale. So I, I brought like seven playmats to give away. And I was like, all right, so at the end of the weekend, I will, oh, I also brought an extra, um, I brought an extra Kataka's Library playmat that I think Fluke ended up giving to uh, Rudy from Alpha Investments, so uh, I guess we'll maybe see that on a future Alpha Investments video. But I ended up walking away with seven playmats. So um, I, I thought I would have a lighter load walking away from the event, but nope. Turns out I have the exact same load. So the first one I got is this Art House Syndicate playmat. This is a 42 out of 50. Absolutely beautiful playmat. I had to get one of these. Art done by my boy uh, Fu Thieu, who I've commissioned before and might commission again in the future. Absolutely love this playmat. Huge shout out to the Art House Syndicate. They have um, like proofs and a bunch of other stuff on their website. It, it's fantastic. So I def definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, there's a bunch of artists on there as well um, with all their proofs and all that stuff. So this is the first one I want to show off. I don't want to say it's my favorite one, but it's one of my favorite ones. So really love this one. Um, and we're just going to take this off and just, I guess, set it on the ground. Here is the playmat that I wanted to get signed by James, but never had the opportunity to do so. Um, we have signatures uh, by Chris, another Chris, uh, Alan Hell, and Ian Kenderdine. Uh, along with James, um, Sasha was at the event, but I never got him to sign it. And there might have been another person who I'm forgetting who was also at the event and I didn't get them to sign it either. I wanted to get basically anyone who's ever worked on the game to sign it. So I also wanted to get Josh to sign it too, but I didn't have time for that. So I got I got four signatures, very incomplete playmat. So a little bummed about that, but not a big deal at the end of the day. This playmat was actually given to me and the entire coverage team as kind of a thank you for working the event. This is the Everfest Judge Playmat. So very, very rare. Only uh, judges and I guess casters 
got this playmat. Um, I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. We also got some other stuff too, including the exclusive judge only uh, like water bottle. It's pretty cool. It says action, drink water, gain hydration, go again. And I was really jealous of seeing like the Pro Tour competitors getting these. They got uh, like a black version. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I wish I could get one. Well, I ended up getting one at the end of day three. So really thankful for this. Uh, the Pro Tour competitors also got a, a Heart of Fiendle playmat, which I didn't get. But, um, you know, I like that being exclusive for the Pro Tour competitors. I think that's really, really cool. I also got some other stuff like maybe some, some of that. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So that's that playmat. This playmat is one of the new ones by Federico Musetti. Obviously, this is Young Alexi. Short story about this playmat. Uh, at the end of day two, I think, uh, me, Diem Ramada, and Fluke and Box were just kind of chatting, and Fluke was like pulling out all of the swag that he got, and he pulled out all of the, um, the artist playmats, and this was one of them, and I was like, holy crap, I didn't know that existed, that's awesome! Uh, and he's just like, oh, here you go. He just gave it to me. The dude just gave it to me. So, um... I, I don't know what to say other than like, Fluke, dude, you're like so generous. Y'all should go subscribe to his channel, Fluke and Box. Um, he does unboxings of like a lot of flesh and blood stuff. And he's just a really nice dude. So yeah, definitely recommend checking him out. And thank you for this Lexi mat, man. Just thank you. I love this. Here we have a mat by um, the Fantastic Realms Gaming Center. I think his name is Tracy who gave this to me. I met him in the lobby of our hotel and he's just like, hey, do you want one of my mats? And I was like, sure. And uh, this is like a full art one. This is one of the ones that they have, uh, like, an, like a limited edition one of the Mask Momentum. So that's really, really cool. Shout out to Tracy. I've met him a couple times before. I think he's up in Alaska, if I remember right. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for the mat, man. Like. Uh, it's awesome and it will be featured in future Flesh and Blood videos, uh, particularly like ninja videos, but really cool. This one's a very special one given to me. This was given to me by my friend Ian Kenderdine. Um, I was like, hey man, I, I kind of want to buy that from you, but you know, maybe we'll trade, maybe we'll work something out. And uh, he's just like, here you go. <laughs> he just gave it to me. So uh, this is a mat that I've wanted for a very, very long time. I really regret not buying one when I had the, I had the chance to get one for like 40 bucks back in the early days of Flesh and Blood because I started playing right before Arcane Rising. And so this is one of my mats that I just really, just really wanted, Red in the Ledger. So I'm so happy to finally get this play mat. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, Ian. You should also go subscribe to him, Right Time Gaming. Um, yeah, so very, very thankful for this as well. And then finally, we have the Fab TCG Cards play mat with the Necromancer. Look at this. This is awesome. So this is done by Bima, the same artist who did my 10,000 subscriber special. Bima is just such an awesome artist. Like, look at this. He's so good. This one is a stitched play mat. And I also want to give a huge shout out to uh, Fab TCG Cards at this time. Uh, Jim over there. He's a great dude. And, uh, you know, a little behind the scenes stuff. He always uh, books our, like, hotel rooms, like, uh, for me and some other friends. And... Um, He's just a, an absolutely great guy. So yeah, there's that. There's all the play mats. All right, so let's show off some more stuff, including some things that I'm going to give away. So here are some Fiendel Spring Tunic sleeves. I'm not gonna be giving these away, mostly just because of shipping reasons and uh, I have other plans for these. I'm going to be opening one to play with. One's going to be on my shelf and then I'll have another one that I think I'm gonna do something special with. But these are awesome. These are uh, Vandal Spring Tunic Sleeves. I ended up with three boxes for the weekend. I actually had four boxes, but gave one uh, to DM Armada, who ended up not getting as much as me. So I, uh, just, I just gave him one because, uh, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a pal. Yeah, but these are great. These are event exclusive. So they're not exclusive to the Pro Tour. You will see these um, elsewhere, but you won't be able to buy them from the store. You can only get them at events, but really, really cool. So got those. Um, likewise, I got Yorick, three Yorick's, and I also have plans for these. I also ended up with four Yorick's, but I gave one to Ian Kenderdine to take back to New Zealand for Lynette, or also known as uh, Fabled Hero uh, NZ. She's um, a just a old school flesh and blood cosplayer, been into it since the beginning. She's awesome. She made some handmade stuff for me that I'm going to show off in a little bit. Um, but uh, 
she was like super bummed that she couldn't make it out. And I was like, you know what? I have four Yorix. Who better give it to than one of the, you know, old, oldest school, old school uh, flesh and blood supporters. I think she deserves it. So I gave a uh, Yorick to her. And you know who else I think deserves a Yorick? You. So I'm going to give away one of these Yorks in today's video. These other two, I'm going to rip one open and I'm going to play with it. And the other one is going to go back on my shelf. So first thing we're giving away. Let's show off some other stuff. Okay, so um, let's see. I have, I have so much stuff to show now. Um, this. All right. This is a sealed Go Bananas that uh, someone gave to me. I'm, I forgot your name. Once again, if you're watching this video, please comment down below. But he gave me this Go Bananas to give away. I am giving away this Go Bananas. This sealed Go Bananas. Do you know how much this is worth? I don't know. It's, it's worth a decent chunk of change. So I'm going to give away this Go Bananas and this Yorick, which is like, what, $1,000 in value? Something around that. I don't know. Seven hundred to 1000 I don't know. Something. Some dumb number. Um, so we're going to give away these, but we're going to give away something else as well. Um, and that is going to be one of these. So this is one of the brand new updated briars with the updated errata. These are uh, front and back, and uh, they were just kind of like given out kind of randomly at the Pro Tour. I ended up with five of them here. Uh, I'm going to keep one for myself, and then I'm going to be giving away the rest. I'm not sure how I'm going to give away the rest, except for today's video. We're going to give away one of these in today's video as well. But the rest of them, um, I'm not sure how to give away them. Maybe patrons, maybe something. No, I'll, I'll figure it out. So these are what we're going to be giving away today. We're going to give away this sealed Yorick, Weaver of Tales. This sealed Go Bananas, one of my favorite cards in the entire game, and it's also just absurdly expensive. And then this Briar promo that is uh, has the updated errata and the new borders, which is really, really cool. So yeah, I'll tell you how to enter this giveaway at the end of the video, which is coming up very soon. But let's show off the coolest things that I got. These. These are all of the signed cards that I got this weekend, and I absolutely love them. So let's kind of do this by artist, right? So this is um, Steve Argyle, and it was a, a true honor meeting Steve. He's a really nice dude, and he's an artist that I've, I've really, really loved his work for a very, very long time. I have a signed uh, Liliana of the Veil vale playmat that I bought from his uh, online store. He's just... He's just a great dude. This is a cold foil viscerai, normally worth $800, and I was so happy to have Steve destroy my card with his signature. And by destroy it, I mean make it that much more sentimental to me because there's no way in hell I was ever se selling this card. This viscerai was given to me by Legend Story Studios as a Christmas gift for the very first year of uh, Flesh and Blood. So uh, this card has so much... Um, significance to me. There was no way I was ever selling it. And getting the artist Steve Argyle to sign it at the very first Pro Tour is such a big deal for me. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. I also got him to uh, ruin my Icelander. And by ruin, I mean make it better by uh, signing it with this uh, awesome like silver signature. I, I had to get them themed, right? I had to get the purple on Viscerai and I had to get the icy on Icelander. And this card was also given to me by Legend Story Studios. Um, for uh, spoiler season, so yeah, absolutely loved it. Very happy to get Steve to sign these. And then, while I was chatting with Steve, I was like, hey man, could you do like a little doodle on the card? I, I love your doodles. And he was like, I could, but it honestly will look bad. Uh, and I was like, okay, you know, I, I understand. Uh, and then he was like, you know what I could do though? I could just do a doodle on one of these things. And these are foil, it's hard to tell that they're foil, but they're, they're foil blank flesh and blood cards that LSS gave to the artists to do little sketches on. And Steve, just right there, drew this. And he's like, hey, do you like angels, dragons, demons, or zombies more? And I was like, um, I don't know, angels, I guess? And then he drew this, this chunky little angel and then signed it, which is awesome. And then he's like, you know what? I'll draw you a dragon too. And I was like, dude, thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. Um, the best part about these is, um, you can kind of see the, kind of see the falling on these. The best part about these is uh, when his wife was like, hey, Steve, how much for those? And he's like, nah, it's free. Um, and I was like, oh, dude, I ended up tipping him. Uh, I won't tell you how much, but a lot <laughs> because so thankful for these. These signatures are like 10 bucks too. Like, yeah, 
I, I appreciated his time very, very much, and I appreciate what he does, and I always love supporting artists. And I uh, put my money where my mouth is when it comes to that. Very happy to, to do that. Uh, similarly, Federico Musetti. So I got Federico to sign my favorite hero in the game, Lexi, second favorite hero, tied for favorite. I don't know, she's up there. And um, I just had this Lexi. I didn't plan on getting him to sign this one. This is just uh, one from uh, the starter decks. Um, but I was just like, yeah, I'll get him to sign this Lexi. And then uh, this is the cold foil Lexi that LSS sent me for uh, taking part of that event of spoiling Lexi. He did draw a little doodle and it got smudged and I'm so bummed. It's my fault, I smudged it. And I'm so bummed, but it still looks fantastic. Um, she kind of has like a little cat cat face now. <laughs> has like a little little cat, cat mouth. Um, but still, absolutely awesome. Yeah, I, I, I will cherish these cards. These, these are so cool. And then, What's better than Steve Argyle and Federico Musetti? Matt DeMarco, also known as Flake, signed this foil Flake Out. And you know what? If I ever run this blue Flake Out in a deck, I'm going to play this card. <laughs> I'm going to play this card, and that'll be awesome. You know, winning a game with the Flake Out Flake. So, huge shout out to um, Flake. We spent a good chunk of time together throughout the event and, and afterwards, um, you know, hanging out at the um, airport. Just great guy, great guy. I'm really looking forward to hanging out with him again in the future. So these are some of my most cherished things. I think they're awesome. I, I, I love them a lot. So let's, let's, show off, let's show off some other stuff, right? We, I got more stuff, I got more stuff. Um, so I also, uh, similar to Steve, I, I tipped Frederico quite a bit and they were, they were like so surprised. They're like, no, take, take some of this stuff. So I got, the Lexi sticker and a chain sticker. Uh, also a little Lexi button. Let me get that in focus. A little Lexi button and a, and a chain button. Uh, they're just like, no, no, take these, take these. I'm like, all right, all right. Um, and then here is my alpha deck that I ended up drafting. These are the other cards that I ended up pulling in the draft. My first pick was a Snapdragon Scalers. Uh, and I tried to stay a little bit open, but I actually ended up playing, here's some foils, Dorinthia. And uh, here's my, my Dory deck. I thought it was pretty good, right? My equipment suite was not bad. Hardened Cross Strap, Iron Rot, and Refraction Bolters. And then I did end up with some decent cards, including like a Drone of Brutality, two Potions of Strength, with, which can actually pump your weapon. Um, decent amount of blues. We got, we got a good old Pink Snatch. Uh, what else? Uh, Nimblism was pretty good. Steel Blade Shun and Overpower Reds were great. Um, so yeah, I think this deck was pretty good. I beat uh, round one Reinar. I actually beat the guy who hold the uh, Enlightened Strike, uh, and I think this deck was good. Uh, just couldn't get there versus Saint, got, got him down to one. Real close, great game, man. Um, so yeah, that's this deck. I did end up passing some Majestics. Nothing like, it was like a Spinal Crush or whatever. Um, and then last but certainly not least, we have some awesome tokens and then some handmade stuff that Lynette made for everyone. Uh, and by everyone, I mean a couple people. So she made like this handmade bag in my channel colors with kind of like the red burgundy kind of kind of colors. This is like a, a dice or counter bag. She also made like a big up like a playmat holder, which is really, really cool. Um, and then I think I'm not sure if anyone else got this, but she also made a little um, I believe this is from Azalea's lore, but she made like this little this little emblem pin, which is uh, which is really, really cool. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynette. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, appreciate the passion and all of the hard work that goes into, uh, you know, cosplay and, and all that stuff. So, that's really awesome. And she also made a little, little card that I haven't opened up yet that I'm going to open up right now. Live. Well, it's not live for you. It's live for me because I'm doing it right now. But for you, you'll see this like a day or two after I day or two after I do this. Um, I'm not sure what the card says, but I figured, hey, it's sealed. You know what we do on this channel? We open up sealed things. Um, yeah. So this is a, oh, dude, it's like a postcard. So here's Ian and uh, Lynette. And, um, you know, she's done a, a bunch of cosplay here. Cavdane, Lexi, Lady Barthamont. Yeah. That's, that was really cool. And uh, here is the the back here. Thank you for remembering me when the world forgets. You know, of course. Like, I I try to remember everyone out there. It's hard sometimes to 
That's why I don't do a lot of shout outs because I feel like if I do, then I have to do everyone. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to forget anyone or leave anyone out, but I, I try my best. I really do. Um, so cheers, Lynette. I, I, I really do appreciate it. Um, and then the final thing are these tokens. So these tokens were done by FabTCG Cards, where we talked about Jim and FabTCG Cards. They did the Necromancer playmat, and they did also these really sweet tokens. Um, pretty good card stock, and uh, just, you know, really rad, just really rad looking art. And uh, likewise, this is from uh, Blackwing Studios. You can see all of their information here. They also have like these custom tokens. So we have like, you know, lightning, earth, this brutal rune chant token, frostbite, spectral shields, and soul shackles. So all these tokens can be found at the respective places, fabtcgcards.com and Blackwing Studios, all these, all these good places here. So yeah, that, that's kind of the haul I got for the, the weekend. Um, but the, the real thing, and this is going to sound so cheesy. I mean, honestly, the real thing is the experiences and memories and all the people that I met. And, you know, I, I really treasure all of that stuff. This is cool, right? Getting all the things is cool. And like getting this, you know, this viscera is just, just awesome. But um, all these memories are, are what truly matters. And so I want to give you some awesome memories. Maybe that time where you won... The, the really crazy giveaway that Red Zone Rogue did. So let's give away these cards to one person. So please comment down below. And let's see, these are all kind of UPF cards, not Briar, but like both of these are Ultimate Pit Fight cards, right? You can't play them outside of Ultimate Pit Fight. So this is going to be themed around Ultimate Pit Fight. I want more people to play Ultimate Pit Fight and it's just a, su such a fun, such a fun format. So tell me what your favorite Ultimate Pit Fight deck is in the comments down below. And if you have not played Ultimate Pit Fight yet, tell me what deck you want to make the most. Because, you know, once again, these are only playable in Ultimate Pit Fight. I wanna give these to someone who's gonna play them in Ultimate Pit Fight, especially this Go Bananas. I want you to play this Go Bananas. Play it, have fun, open up packs. It's my goal every single time I play Ultimate Pit Fight, my goal is to get Go Bananas and play it. Yes, do it. And I want to give this to you to be able to do that and enjoy in the fun. The Briar is just kind of like a little bonus thing. You get the promo maybe before everywhere else. You know, everywhere else. Um, but these two are the exclusive ones that I really want to give to you. So do that. Comment down below. Uh, also, you have to be a subscriber and, you know, uh, like the video. Do, do, do all those things. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and then you can enter the giveaway. I'll, I'll mail these anywhere in the world. It should be pretty cheap because it's just some cards. And... Um, Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If I met you at uh, the Pro Tour, like I said, comment down below that as well. You can tell me what's your favorite Ultimate Pit Fight deck and then also mention anything else about the, the Pro Tour. But just make sure you, you do the comment about the Ultimate Pit Fight thing. You'll, only people who comment about Ultimate Pit Fight will be entered into the giveaway. I will be filtering the comments. So, or rather, if, I get, if your comment gets chosen and you didn't talk about Ultimate Pit Fight, I'm just going to choose another person. So, that's how it's going to go. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to everyone that I met. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's kind of like a different take on these event recaps. I hope you enjoyed the footage and the pictures and the experiences. Um, if you weren't able to be there, I hope you were able to catch the live streams and, uh, you know, some of the matches that I did, some of the matches that everyone else did. It was, uh, it was an unforgettable event. And um, it's, I'm still kind of decompressing from it, to be completely honest. I was exhausted. The day I came back, I slept until like 1.30 p.m. I, I, was, I was very, very tired. But it was worth it. So worth it. So thank you once again. Do the thing that I mentioned. And uh, we'll see you next time for some Flesh and Blood content. I will be at the Upwising world premiere event in Las Vegas. So if you'd like to come say hi to me then... Please, please do so. Until then, see you later.